Commissioner, thank you very much for joining us. You're certainly no stranger to the political arena here locally in, in Nevada, but this is your first efforts into public office. Why are you taking this step as Commissioner in District A? Well, I've spent the last six years serving the, the constituents of this valley of Clark County, uh, and uh, I just have such a passion for this valley. I grew up here. I uh, went to school about a block away at Las Vegas Academy, uh, and this community has given so much to me that how could I not give back and serve my community? And so then you knew uh, Commissioner, now Governor Sisolak, was up picking his successor, and what happened? How did this process begin? Yeah, well, uh, I've known Governor Sislak for a long time. I've had so much respect for how he's handled his leadership role here as chair of the Clark County Commission. Uh, and uh, he reached out to me after he was elected and uh, asked if I would consider uh, taking on this role, which, of course, I jumped on that opportunity, and I'm just so thrilled to be here. You mentioned your previous life with uh, Congresswoman Dita Titus. You, as you say, you're representing much of the same geography, much of the, many of the same constituents in both of those. But that's a different uh, political arena, different jurisdiction, and whatnot. How, wh where, or how, how can that help you in the, the the county? So I think one of the most important lessons I learned during my six years as district director uh, for the first congressional district is how important it is to meet constituents at their doorstep, and that's my goal here to get out. Uh, it's great to be here in the office uh, here in the county building, which I, I'm here regularly, but my goal is to be out in the district as much as possible, meet our business owners, uh, large and small, meet the folks who are going to our schools and our neighborhoods and our community parks, uh, and really get to know what their needs are so that I could best serve them and make myself as approachable as possible. Like you said, I've been in this community a long time, but folks might not know me that well, so that's why I want to be there as much as possible. You talk about that, your social media outreach and town halls, so you'll continue things like that for District Day? Absolutely. I think that's in this day and age, technology is all, all that's what it's all about. You've got to physically be there, but you also have a, to have a presence communicating where people want to be communicated to. And nowadays, that's through Facebook, that's through Twitter, social media. Uh, so I'll be present there. I'll respond to folks on the phone or on uh, through my Twitter handle. What are your top issues uh, for, for your district? Well, I think that's, one, for one, making sure we're accessible. That's a critical issue and making sure that, you know, oftentimes when people come to the government, uh, come to the county or the federal or their local municipality, uh, it might not be the best day they're having. That might not be what they woke up and wanted to do to come fight over a bill or to pay a bill. Uh, that's oftentimes what people do when they uh, have contact with their government. So I think we need to make it make sure that our team here knows that that might be the case and you know does their best to make sure that uh, we're putting our best face forward and we're making it as easy as possible. And that extends to the online presence of the county as well. I think we can we can improve our efforts there, make to improve access and uh, the ease of access. Perhaps it's not a fair question. I know you've only been on the job for a couple of weeks here so far as we tape this, but is there anything about the county organization that surprised you, maybe that you've learned in the last couple of weeks that just was an oh wow moment? Well, here's something that wasn't much of a surprise, but it was really nice. It's just how uh, approachable and friendly my new colleagues on the county commission uh, have been. Each and every one of them has taken time to sit down with me. Uh, so many of them have served our community for such a long period of time and while they might also like me a couple of them are new to the county they're not new to our community so they've shared their uh, life lessons uh, their experiences with local and other governments and I'm just really appreciative of that. And you've certainly been no stranger to, or you've met every single one of them, I'm sure, many times in the past. I have. We've had overlapping jurisdictions, and it's been a real pleasure to work with them over many years. I know you're taking a field trip to the southern part of District A, Searchlight and Laughlin coming up. Do you have any indication of what the folks there might need that's maybe a little bit different than what we need here in the Valley? Well, I, for one, I have to say, that's what, one of the reasons why I'm so thrilled to be in this district, in District A, aside from living here and it being my home. Uh, district A is so exciting, it's diverse uh, in many different facets, but you have the urban core, you have a piece of the Las Vegas Strip, and you also have those wonderful rural areas, Laughlin and Searchlight, which you're right, I'll be doing a couple day tour of uh, in the coming days here, and I'm really excited to, I've met with lots of folks from that area. We sat down with the town boards of Searchlight and of Laughlin, 
um, and they'll be hosting me uh, on their turf uh, next week. So I'm looking forward to it. One of the first things that has already come to your attention in District A has uh, ginned up from one of our the previous board meeting where a number of the people from Nevada SPCA were not very happy with the conditions out there. Maybe just can you just capsulize what what yeah. you can do and what the problem is there? I think that is a great example of uh, why government needs to be accessible. You know, we had that opportunity during the public comment period for folks to come forward to talk to us about you know some of the concerns they've had and to be fair they've been raised before in the past uh, right after the meeting I came up here to my office I contacted the director of the NSPCA she was kind enough to invite me on a tour a full access tour so I could see the facility in depth with my own eyes and I can report back then to the constituents who raised the issue uh, you know that the, the NSPCA is in District A which I'm glad that they're there I'm appreciative for what they're doing well, we can't tolerate any kind of uh, inappropriate activity um, towards animals. We need to look out for their welfare as well. And what, what can the county do? What, what types of things? To be clear, the county has done quite a bit. They've been, uh, on average, doing monthly um, visits, uh, inspections of the facility. Uh, they've been very hands-on, spoke with the head of animal control to get a sense directly from him of what they've been doing and what they can do. And I just think we need to, we have a new, new executive director over there, so I think things are getting better, uh, but we got to see that through and make sure that they are uh, at 100% meeting our standards. And again, probably another, not a fairest question as you're sitting no. here again, a couple weeks into office. It's all but, fair game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how terrific, but you plan to continue on this job when they have to face the voters in a couple of years? Thank you for asking. Yeah, I was, uh, I'm so honored that Governor Sisolak appointed me to his seat, uh, but that's the remaining two years of his term. So I'm thrilled to serve that out. And yes, I will be running for the, for the seat in 2020. All right, we'll let you get back to work. Thank you very much for Thank spending time. Thank you so time much. Good talking to you. You too.